It is 4 a.m. at Union Kitchen in Washington, D.C., and Majid Abdurrahim is well on his way, preparing a meal for 150 people. But first, a few last sips of water. Four minutes. <laughs> Abdurrahim won't eat or drink from dawn to sunset during the month of Ramadan, so the middle of the night is his busiest time. The reason is that kitchen work, the oven, the grill, it makes you thirsty. That kind of work while you're fasting is very difficult. But the 29-year-old chef has faced far greater challenges, including having to rebuild his life. He worked in several restaurants in Syria before he fled the country in 2013 as it was being torn apart by war. It's impossible for any Syrian to forget those days to forget what Syria was and what it became. He fled to Jordan, where he married his wife, another refugee. But life there was difficult. Everything was hard in Jordan, especially with two kids. You don't have any assistance and you're not allowed to work. When he got the opportunity to come to the U.S. in 2016 with his family, in Syria, the presidential election was heating up and so was rhetoric about immigrants and refugees. Uh, I don't know, maybe, but Trump maybe not like refugees. <laughs> but Abdurrahim said when he arrived, something unexpected happened. I was amazed that the first people I met on the street smiled at me without even knowing me. After years of attempting to resettle, Abdurrahim soon had reason to smile himself. He found himself back in the kitchen working for a company called Fudini. Noobsa Philip Vang started the meal delivery service because he missed his mother's Laotian cooking. He also saw an opportunity to help other immigrant and refugee chefs. People are aware of the situations that are abroad, but maybe they haven't really been able to even connect with a refugee or something like that. And I think what's really cool is we can kind of bridge those two worlds. Customers say they get satisfaction from a good meal and a deeper understanding of stories like Abdurrahim's. It's a win-win. I get his food and I also can feel that I'm helping him through what must be just an incredibly difficult, difficult time. Despite the struggles he's faced, Abdurrahim remains optimistic. He attributes that outlook to his daughters. My daughters are the most valuable things in my life. <laughs> They're still small, but I show them pictures and talk to them about Syria. I tell them about the places we've lived, and I hope I can visit with them one day. In the meantime, he stays connected to those memories through his food. Noreen Nasser, The Associated Press.